I'm sweating so much. Uh, hey guys, it's me, 1239 here, and I'm here to give you guys my season three, episode one reaction titled, what's the title? A Secret Which I Desire to Divine. Now, I am sweating, as you can probably tell, <laughs> so much because I have to turn off the AC, I have to turn off the fans. I'm dripping in sweat right now, and that's fine because I can tolerate it. Don't look my best right now, so I'm just gonna say that. To talk about the first episode that we're gonna watch for season three, first of all, I just, I have a couple of things to say before we start this. Number one, these videos are not meant for you to watch them in a way. Like what I mean to say is that I don't upload these reaction slash commentary videos so that you guys can just watch the entire episode. I won't be showing the entire episode in my videos. I'm going to be showing a select <laughs> amount of clips. So this isn't a free way to watch season three. This is a series of commentary and reactions and they're going to be cut up. I'm just giving my opinion. So if you don't like me talking, if you don't want me to talk, if you don't want me to omit any clips <laughs> from the episode, then you are probably watching the wrong video. I think you were trying to find how to watch the show. That's not here. You're not going to find that here. So I just wanted to give that first disclaimer. Second of all, these are the only types of videos that I'm going to be having spoilers in for now until season three comes out on January 3rd for international fans. Therefore, these videos will contain a huge amount of spoilers, so if you don't want that, just click off, watch the show when you can, and then if you want, come back and watch these videos. So don't blame me if you get spoiled. There's this huge warning right now at the beginning. Don't watch these videos if you don't want to be spoiled, if you haven't seen the show. If you don't care, continue watching. That's great for me. I'm going to be blurring out the thumbnails so you won't have to see anything spoilery related until it comes out on January 3rd, then I'll change the thumbnails, you know? That's all I wanted to say. I hope that is clear with you guys, and also, I kind of watched like two minutes of the show already this first episode because my dad like I already told him that you know season three was gonna come out and stuff and he was like oh we should probably watch it <laughs> on CBC we technically have cable but the antenna thing you know we don't really get that good of a signal he was like oh we should check it out and I was like oh I don't know and he put it on anyway and I like yeeted from there because I didn't want to spoil myself with the episode <sighs> So yeah, but now I'm gonna watch the full episode. Let's get started now. I can't believe this is happening. I actually love this aesthetic. The winter aesthetic is so common in Canada. We live in the North Pole. We already see Anne riding a horse from the very beginning. That means we don't get to see her learning. Oh, her hair tie fell off. She's just kind of... Okay, that must be a very exciting scene to film. Come on, Belle. Oh, it's Belle. Oh, that's so cute. I love that. I actually like that it's it's Belle and Belle is still with us, you know? Is this where she meets Gaguet already? Like, that's my question. I know it'll be answered. wonder what it must feel like to have such certainty in life. Now she wants to learn about her lineage. What it feels like to truly belong. Yeah. But she kind of already belongs. You'll right? know that soon enough, won't you? What? She's pregnant? Belle is pregnant? I'm thinking of baby names for you. <laughs> <laughs> Belle is pregnant. First thing. The title sequence. I miss it. I love how they still keep it. Because it's just so iconic. The, the song is iconic. The aesthetic of it is beautiful. Like, it's uncomparable to anything. I don't know how they would have been able to top that because it's already so good. I'm already raving about this this title sequence because it's just so uh, it's so good. It's not underrated. Everyone loves it. But it's it's just so creative. It's unlike anything I've ever seen before. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Here it comes. <laughs> the moment that I've been waiting for. I think. I don't know. So good. Moody, come on. Come on. Okay, what happened? Oh, the playbook? Ruby. You're supposed to be covering the game. Gilbert. Yeah. So it was... Oh my god. <laughs> Billy! That Josie may become her sister. In law. What? So Josie likes Billy. Wig flew off. Diana. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, Moody. Isn't Ruby covering the game? Ruby's very preoccupied. <laughs> With a certain someone. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I just spit. Uh, uh, she hasn't outgrew her crush yet. It's been like five years, I think. Oh my god, go ahead! I knew it! She wants to play with 
the kids. <laughs> He's so tall now. Oh my god. They've all grown up so much. You're gonna swallow your words, Billy boy. Okay, I love Moody. Uh, thank you. Moody! <laughs> he knows English. Aw. Good afternoon. I'd like to order a stick, if I may. I'd like to order a stick. Oh, he makes sticks. Oh, Lulu, she's so cute. I'd love to write an article about you. Ah, ah, she did write an article for the newspaper. Uh, Billy, Thank get out stick. of here. Can Billy just stop for one second? Doug Ah. What you doing here? <laughs> I love her already. What about Gina and Jeez? With the big ego. Walk with the water the way the sun goes down. Until the land goes flat and open. Okay, I would not be able to remember that. All oh, the boys are so immature. Dad Wait, who's Tyson? that? Oh my god, He's Josie and me. Billy. You can't even add. That's not true. That's not true. I love how they're having more screen time. Dear, this path is so rough. Allow me. Oh. My. God. Jane is mood. I enjoyed the journey and looking for clues. I remember this part from the script. When your eyes seek and your heart is open, that is true break. I love that part from the trailer. So Anne's like a news reporter now, or a journalist, I guess. Small brother, sister. Oh. Oh, those are the kids that got selected to be your siblings. I remember when they had auditions for them. Love your hair ties. I love your colorful scarf. Oh my god. Want to trade? Shall Want to trade? trade? Shall we? Tra <laughs> there you go. And then they trade. Hello. Oh my god, Matthew. With, I think, cows? You're right. I think those are cows. Sorry. Marilla. There really is such a different vibe to this season already. I don't know how to explain it. It's just... Different? I mean, they're older now, so that's probably part of it. <laughs> and also kind of strange what they're doing. I, oh, I see. She's comparing them because they act so alike, you know? Like when Kaguet did that. <laughs> that's so funny. I'm worried Margaret has eyes for him. The little wretch followed his every move at the game. Who is Margaret? In my day, we had a take notice board. You take notice of someone you like, take notice of a flirtation, and then you post it. For everyone to see. A notice board like Instagram? Please send them my love. What if everything she thought about her parents isn't really true? I think that might be something she'll come to realize. No. Oh, I was like, why is there a cemetery right to next to Gilbert's house? I forgot about his wrong. father. Oh, was every little thingy wingy. There she is. There's daddy. <gasps> pretty, pretty baby. Oh, I knew it! They have kids! I knew it. <sighs> I was like 110% sure about this. <laughs> I love how they revealed it too, because that was kind of weird, what he was doing, and I didn't really want to bring that up, but now I'm glad that it wasn't really that weird, you know? Good day, Delphine. Delphine. Maybe you should try speaking English to her. Maybe someday she'll actually learn something. <laughs> I love Gilbert's rose. She's so cute. Ah. They're so happy. I'm rather glad your doctor has advised you more exercise. <laughs> Wait, is that Rachel? <laughs> Hello, dear geese. Did you know they mate for life? Why do I... Deja vu? Anne? Didn't Anne say that? <laughs> Can't breathe. <laughs> That's literally me. Oh, you are in luck. <sighs> She's knocking on wood. I'm... I love her. She really knocked on wood. That's gonna... <laughs> Oh, Yeah, we didn't really see them interact that much. You'll be in college with everyone- Okay. They literally saw each other the day before and they didn't really talk. Okay, they're in school. 16. Love that. Anything could happen. What does that mean? Nothing happens when you turn 16. Oh my god, Billy walked Josie home. This is like... Instagram. Or Twitter. The clock is ticking. Oh, Ruby. At this age, we should so all cute. be close to someone. But I'm only going to Queens to be near Gilbert. She's going to Queens. Diana, your dress is very blue. Oh my God, Moody. Too close to the sun. Morning. I'm not sure if you're aware. It's a way to make a casual declaration. Um. Yeah. To someone you like. Yes. Not her, Gilbert. Don't. I can't wait a minute. Because all these little notices matter when you want to let someone know that you're thinking ahead. Oh to their future together? <laughs> oh god, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. You're suggesting <laughs> I 
post? No! If you're interested in Ruby, you should let her know before someone else takes their claim. Oh my god. Oh, Wait, this reminds me of a winter's ball. Not exactly a take notice kind of guy. Oh, he was so close to doing it. That was so... I don't know how to explain it, but that was just, that was intense. His eyes were so full of romance, I almost died happy right there and then. Yeah, no. And is waiting for a much more romantic way to approach me than that. And is just like, sure, just don't like tell Josie about it, please. Bye. Oh my god, I didn't, I didn't, I was like, who was that? Who's just talking right now? I may die, but first you, my tyrant and tormentor. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, Miss Cabert, it's uh, the monster. Frankenstein. Frankenstein! That makes sense, right? He's reading Frankenstein? The episode titles are Frankenstein, if you guys didn't know. When my ancestor, Lord Pembroke, negotiated- Well, at least you can read now. Why does it seem like there's less students in this class? Well done, Diana. No notes. Have any information about my lineage? Just skip to the next person. Of course. Oh. Carry on, reporters. Now she's gonna talk to Anne about that, okay? And she's gonna suggest she goes to the orphanage. Will Marilla let her? We'll find out, but she most likely will. Oh, she's helping her with the baby. Really That's, so took cute. The That's so sweet, honestly. Yeah, she never had any kids. Ooh. All right, Queen okay. study group stay. <laughs> Mini me. Wait, who's is that? Marilla? Oh, is Nate gonna appear? <laughs> Sorry. I just love the Norella jokes. What was that? Is that wood? My favorite. Is this Gilbert's study group day? It is. Okay. Maybe sleeping. Okay. I see where this is going and I don't need to see this. I've seen enough already. I mean, they're cute. They're very cute. This reminds me of a fanfic I read. Yeah, I shouldn't have said that. Glowbird was there. Nice. His first appearance. Okay, is there gonna be love letters being sent around here? Oh my god. Charlie is the nicest boy in school. Tilly has been noticed twice. Ooh, Tilly. <laughs> Who? Oh my god. It was Kyle and Damon. The Billy Pals. Oh my god. This is. Oh, yeah. Uh, I love that scene. It's iconic. What is she doing? <laughs> I, I, I. <laughs> See you. Goodbye. <gasps> I'm just gonna shake my head in disappointment. <laughs> it's finally happened. I'm 16. I already said it. Okay, this was wrong. This theory that. Uh, I talked about was wrong. There was no Christmas ball. Here we go. It's finally the happened. shot of the window. Once upon a time, this was the happiest day of my parents' life. Oh, that's true. That's so cute. Okay, that's actually cute. <laughs> it's just Matthew. Oh, she thought it was gonna be something. There's gonna be something there. Of course, there will be. But oh, she thinks that they didn't remember, and he's like, <laughs> you know. Hello, for she's a jolly oh, I love that. Which nobody, nobody can, can deny. deny. For bad luck to catch you. Okay. Oh my god. Oh, she's crying. And I feel extra inspired now to start the search for my true origin story. Ah, uh, yeah, they're not gonna be happy about that. You'd have to go all the way to Nova Scotia. And she wants to do that. Travel by train with Gilbert. Ah! Yes, Charlotte. We were right. We'll really see Gilbert and Anne together on a train. <laughs> okay, no, Jerry, stay back. Just stay what back, please. What was that? Our parents are Does dead. Have a... what? what? Jerry! That has nothing to do with Anne's birthday. Can he stop? Oh, okay, so that was the plan. She wasn't actually supposed to go with her parents or something. We did all this! Oh, I'm Daisy smiling. We almost ruined the whole thing! <laughs> <laughs> Are they really talking about Jerry like that? Some of you, and by you, I mean Tilly, have a two-boy problem. It's not a problem! Oh my god. I can't. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense now. I remember that photo. And ensures that you can travel with Gilbert. Yeah. Oh my god, are we gonna see her ask him next episode? What if she leaves us? She won't. She would never. Who is Anne with an E? Oh, it was her. Okay. I thought it was Jane. It was Anne who said that. She sounds a lot like Jane in that. That was interesting. So as I was watching the episode, I kept thinking about how in a way it's like, it's not just her discovering her origins, but if she does accomplish that, her identity will kind of shift no matter what. Like when she finds out where she comes from, she will have a different opinion about herself. I guess it will change the meaning of her name, which was brought up in this episode when Guguet asked her, what does your name mean? I think when she finds out things about her parents, she's gonna look at her name very differently. I kind of enjoyed this episode. I like seeing the kids more in, in the show and, and their involvement. And there's a few things that were kind of... <laughs> I was like, what? I can't really hear very well right now because I have water stuck in my ear from this morning when I showered. I don't know how loud I'm speaking, to be honest. <laughs> anyway, it's a few days after I reacted to the first episode and I just decided that I'm gonna extend this video a bit more just so that I can talk about everything that I probably would in a review. There's a lot more things that I can go into in this video, so we're just gonna get started with that. <laughs> So first we're going to talk about the theories that we can finally confirm and debunk. Some of the theories that I had for this episode. So remember how there was an ice rink in this episode, right? Like there's a video about that. I was trying to guess who was in the picture. So turns out that Diana, Ruby, and Anne are in the picture, but also Josie. And one of my theories also was the fact that I thought that Anne would be playing with the boys. So that wasn't it. She's not playing with the boys. She's like along with the girls. That's the first theory I want to debunk. <laughs> the second one is i mean this wasn't a theory i ever really brought up i don't think but i remember when i was watching the season two episode five i think the spin the bottle episode where josie and billy exchange looks towards each other after josie gives him a letter saying that let's play spin the bottle i think this was foreshadowing this new love relationship between them it seems like josie likes billy i don't think it's really clear right now how Billy really feels about Josie. So the hair tie plus a scarf exchange did actually happen in this episode. I think it went verbatim to what was in the script. It was word for word except for you know a few like scenes added and stuff. So then the next part is where Anne is sitting and she's praying right about how she accepts the way she is. So I thought this was gonna happen after she interacts with Aunt Josephine but she already starts to accept it in the first episode so that was something that I didn't get right. The next thing I actually got this right. So I was very certain that Bash and Mary would have a baby by this point. The reason why, I guess I can say it now, the reason why I was 100% certain that they would have a baby by this point is because I saw a Facebook casting call for an African Canadian baby and the thing that gave that away for me was the fact that they said, like, put in the email title and yeah, so Bash and Mary have a kid. That was correct. The scene where Diana and Anne are looking at each other like sad in the classroom scene. So my theory was that it was because Diana's upset that she can't take the Queen's Academy entrance exams prep class, right? And that was right. Diana feels restricted. Her parents don't want her to go to Queen's. I think that's actually it for debunking or confirming theories that I previously gave. I don't know if there's a literary or film term for the way... Okay, so I'm gonna try to explain this. So when Guguet tells Anne where to find her wigwam, where to find the camp... Find the thin water that moves, travel upstream until all around you is green trees. That reminded me a lot of the fact, because I'm taking a lot of English courses in university right now, and we talk a lot about indigenous literature. Something that one of my professors said while we were reading, actually this happened twice, it was the same professor. When we read indigenous literature, there tends to be, in the beginning of the novel, a description of where the setting is located at. And it's very descriptive and it tells you this is here, you have to go through here, and it kind of like shows it to you like as if you're reading a map, you know? This scene with Guguet and Anne, where Guguet is explaining that to Anne, reminded me of the literature of indigenous people in my classes because, see, the thing is, is that when indigenous writers write something for non-indigenous readers, they have to kind of explain where the setting is so that just to get an idea where the story is going to take place at, and I think that was sort of a similar, if not exactly the same technique that they used in the show, so that we could get an understanding uh, 
as non-indigenous people, most of us, where the setting of the camp is. Basically, I guess how isolated or how close it is to where Anne lives as well. That's the interpretation I got from that. Hope that made sense. <laughs> so now we're going to talk about the political correctness of the terms Indian and indigenous. So I know in the show, the show takes place a century ago, right? And they're using the term Indian to describe indigenous people. So obviously the term Indian is outdated. That's not the name that they use now. It's very important to distinguish that. So just remember that. And also because of the fact that when Columbus came to colonize America, he thought he was in India and then he labeled them as Indians. That's where it comes from. Indian and the show, it fits with the times, but we don't do that anymore. The next thing I'm going to talk about, it's not mentioned in the show at this point at least. I don't know if it is going to be mentioned, but this is a very important historical fact about Canada and it is about residential schools. I thought I would go into it a little bit just to explain to you guys the intergenerational trauma that indigenous people have suffered over past generations. About a century ago up to, I don't remember exactly when, but not very distant ago, indigenous children were taken away from their families. They were put into these residential schools. They were stripped away from their identity. This was a form of genocide, wiping away a culture and race. They were stripped away from their identity, their clothes, their hair, their language, their families. That created obviously a trauma because they were so abused. They didn't speak English. They started speaking their native language and stuff like that. So that trauma that indigenous children suffered through during that time passed on to future generations. That's why it's still relevant today. So the fact that they're telling a very important part of Canadian history in the show is great. That's why I was always on board with this idea. So this genocide happened in Canada. Hopefully with the show people will come to be more accepting, more conscious of the fact that we still have a lot of change to make in this country. Now we're gonna talk about predictions. So obviously my, my first prediction, which has always been a prediction of mine, Anne and Gilbert are gonna visit Cole. We know this, like they even said it in the episode, it's pretty obvious that Anne and Gilbert are gonna ride the train together, then they're gonna go to Charlottetown, Anne is gonna reunite with Cole. There's also a clip that recently was released in one of the interview videos where we see Anne and Gilbert walking together and Gilbert has a hockey stick in his hand. I don't know if that's a part of the next episode, episode two that's gonna come out, we'll see I guess. At this point, I haven't watched it yet, obviously. It hasn't even come out yet by the time I'm filming this, so yeah. And then obviously Anne will visit the orphanage next episode. That's a given. I think she might find out something that she wasn't expecting or that might ruin her image of her parents. Like, it has to change Anne in some way, finding out something about her parents. It has to make her head spin. Oh yeah, another thing that- I forgot to mention this. <laughs> another thing that I kind of, I guess, guessed right? I don't remember if I said this. I think I said this or someone else said this, but Anne is writing for the school newspaper. I think that was one of my predictions. I can't remember, but she actually is. That was something we got right, so we love that. Uh, oh, what was that? That was weird. I think the the lights went off. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say. Go back to the outro, I guess, of this video. But yeah, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of this episode. If you seen it, hopefully you have at this point. And yeah, I love you guys so, so much. Thank you guys for always watching. Mwah. Hope you guys have an amazing day or night or whatever time you guys are watching this. Subscribe to my channel if you enjoy these videos. I'll be making reaction videos to all of the episodes in season 3, so hope you stick around for that. Episodes come out weekly, so I'll be releasing my reaction videos a few days after the episode comes out, so I'm just letting you guys know that. <laughs> That's my kind of schedule. I'm not going wood for Selma. Follow me on all my social media accounts, they should be appearing on my screen right now. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye! Mwah.